reproducing a driver's side door for a race car is a little bit different to a passenger side because racing regulations pretty much all the way around the world require that a copied door have a smooth inner skin rather than all these holes and edges that might injure a driver in the event of a crash. So my first job in moulding the inside of this driver's door is to smooth all of this off and I'm just going to use a piece of tin and a bit of filler for that. I've got the inside of this driver's door nice and smooth now with this piece of tin so I can mould the bottom half of it. I've got to go around with the clay and do some detailing work filling the gaps between the glass and the top of the frame and I, I want to go up the glass um, even though I'm just doing the lower half, I want to go up the glass about 25 mil so that I've got an overlapping edge to join both the inner and the outer skins together and to also make the flange that the Lexan, uh, clear Lexan window will be glued onto. You can see that I've cut out a pocket here. This recess is for the factory door handle. I thought if I mounted it on the top of this inner skin that the scrutineers might not be happy with it uh, as a protruding object. So I've cut that pocket out. The door handle will sit in there. Now this is fairly close to being able to mould now. I've made my two outer door moulds and the inner skin moulds. Now it's time to make the four copies and bring those pieces together to make my doors. I'm going to use three different types of composite materials and I'm going to make the inner door frames first for reasons that will become obvious later in the video. This inner door frame for the unused passenger side door will not be made in carbon fibre because that material in hand laying would not take up these compound curves properly. You'd have to vacuum bag it and I'm doing this without that. On a shape like this for hand laying it's best to use gel coat and fiberglass cloth and the weight difference between that and carbon fibre on a part this size, well it's not worth worrying about.
The whole of this passenger door is going to be carbon fibre, but I'll use gel coat and light fiberglass cloth just for this door handle recess because those materials take up these compound curves better than uh, carbon fibre does just in basic hand laying. And it won't matter because you won't see it. The whole door is going to get painted when the car is put together anyway. Most people would let this dry right off and bring the two hardened halves of the doors, the inner skin and the outer skin together. And what you would use, ideally, would be epoxy resin to glue them together. But wait a minute. What I'm laying up this door with is epoxy resin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join the two halves together before this one sets and I'm going to use the epoxy resin of the carbon fibre layup to lock the two halves together. And that way, <coughs> any of the minor imperfections and little bumps between the differences between the two halves will be taken up when I compact them. I've drilled holes all the way around the inner door skin so the resin will spill out a little bit and lock things together just like spot welds. How did my carbon fibre door turn out? Well, I'm pretty happy with the finish. I've got the inevitable uh, little uh, blister holes and a couple of air bubbles. But as I said, this is going to be painted, so that'll soon be fixed with a little bit of car body filler. Uh, the inside of the door, inside white fibreglass framing, adhered really well using uh, just the layup resin itself. But the question you're all asking is how much does it weigh? Well, the standard uh, Honda door weighed 27 and a half kilos each. I can hold this one on my little finger. It weighs 4.3 kilos. That's a total weight saving with both of the doors on the car of over 46 kilos. This inner panel is not only more comprehensive than the simple perimeter frame of my passenger door. It's also part of the side impact protection system. I'll use this light 225 gram or an imperial 8 ounce chop strand mat around the door handle recess and these compound curves like I did with your passenger door. But most of this door will be made from Kevlar which gives the greatest tear and impact resistance far greater than carbon fibre. The outer skin of this door will also be Kevlar.
The final step in making this impact resistant race car door is to fill it with foam and the right type must be used. And it's not foam in a tube, but pouring foam. I have been using pouring foam for well over 30 years. The FIA and CAMS by default in Australia have specified the type of foam that must be used in international events like the World Rally Championship by type and by brand. The Australian manufacturers at the time of this video are totally unaware of this marketing opportunity and the ones I've contacted can't supply it. <laughs> but that's okay because 99.9% .9 of you will never enter an international event. And what I'm about to show you will meet all the requirements for national, state and multi-club competition. In fact, it'll exceed what is required. So by default, I'm just going to use general purpose pouring foam, which expands 20 to 25 times its volume. It's messy stuff and it will always find a hole and leak out. The way this foam works is that it cements both layers together and fills the void between them. And this inhibits them pushing together or bending in the event of a crash. The foam is also dense. On its own, you can easily snap it, but when sandwiched between two layers, it becomes incredibly crash resistant. Its expansion creates nasty gases and tremendous pressures that will blow any fiberglass double panel apart. That problem is avoided by encasing uh, the inner and the outer door halves in their moulds for this process. From wholesale fiberglass material suppliers, from insulation uh, material product suppliers, or from the manufacturers of the foam themselves. And you can find all of those by Googling for them in your area. The FIA also requires that your door sills be filled with foam. That's easy to do, and I'll show you how to do that later on. I can't put the inner door skin mould back over this door to strengthen it while I pour the foam, because it'll block these holes off, and I won't have any access to pour the foam in. So instead, what I'll do is I'll just put some heavy timber across the door and clamp it and that'll stop the panel from popping out. The teams who build race cars for international events all have budgets and resources you and I never will. And they use state-of-the-art composite techniques. I'm not pretending that is what I've shown you here. I'm just a guy in a shed showing others what and how they can increase their own racing safety themselves if they want to. I have shown you lots of ideas and techniques that can be applied and adapted 
across the many different forms and levels of motorsport other than international rallying. Our results may not be perfect, we need a little tidying up, but they will certainly do the job. Stay off the armco and out of the trees. Thanks for watching.